What can you do to help elephants? If you're like me, you love elephants. I actually studied them for my PhD, but realistically, what can we do, especially if we don't live in the countries where they live? How can we help them? What are the best ways? I'm Dr. Stephanie Shuttler, and in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you exactly about that, the best ways that you can ha help elephants for their survival, because they're being poached really badly right now. People don't even know know that, um, so we're gonna talk about that today. My channel is all about empowering scientists and inspiring everyone to conserve the natural world. Okay, so what can you do to help elephants? They are currently endangered. Well, it depends on what species you're talking about, but African forest elephants, Asian elephants are definitely endangered. And I'm gonna start off with the most effective thing you can do to help elephants and move into some easier things to do. But by far, the most effective thing that you can do today is to donate money. I know that's boring, but what this money does is it pays for rangers, which are boots on the ground. And the more people that we have on the ground in these national parks to protect the elephants, the less likely poaching is going to happen. In our national parks, or at least here in the United States, we have strict rules about who can enter the parks. And all, poaching does happen, but you don't hear about it that much. But people know where the national parks are. They don't just start chopping down forests in the national park or, or building something there. But in a lot of other countries, their parks are what are called paper parks. So on a map, they'll have a national park designation, but in reality, there's not a lot of enforcement or wildlife protection. And in Gabon, the country where I work in, there is mostly forested areas without extensive road or trail systems. So a lot of the parks aren't even accessible. Therefore, it's really easy for forests or for poachers to get into these parks, kill elephants, and for them to leave without anyone noticing. So if you can pay um, organizations to put rangers in place, um, to be able to protect the elephants. That is honestly the most effective thing you can do. I recommend three organizations, the um, Wildlife Conservation Society, that's who I worked with when I was doing my PhD research, the World Wildlife Fund. Um, I didn't work with them directly, but uh, we worked alongside those researchers. They had areas um, divvied up of Gabon, so the different organizations didn't overlap. And the African Wildlife Foundation as well. They're all great. Okay, the next thing that you can do, probably in terms of effectiveness as well, but this one's easy, and that is spread the word. A lot of people don't know that elephants are being poached. And um, for forest elephants, this is especially true. That it is hidden poaching. Because it's in the forest, you can't see that it happens. In countries like Kenya and South Africa, where most of the habitat is savanna, you can have helicopters or planes fly over and see elephants dead or alive. So if you have a poaching problem, you know about it right away. Now drones are even starting to replace that. You can also see the poachers easily too. They have poaching camps, so if there's fires um, coming, you can be able to tell, okay, that's a poaching camp from air. In the forest, again, it's so much harder to see that stuff. You can't see the carcasses, you can't see the poaching camps. You may see fires, but is it coming from a village or is it coming from the poacher's camp? You, you don't know. It is so much harder to do that. So elephants historically went through, um, or at least since almost my lifetime, a little bit before my lifetime, um, in the 70s, I was born in the 80s, but um, there were waves of poaching that really reduced um, the elephant populations. And then I remember, I think in the 90s, Kenya taking a big stance and they burned their ivory um, that was confiscated from poachers. And they did so because they wanted to send a message to poachers that that they were no longer tolerating this, their country was taking a stance against poaching. They, along with some other methods, they actually did reduce their poaching. Some of the method, methods were controversial, but maybe we can talk about that in another episode. But it was effective. And um, when I started my, my PhD, um, 
I, or when I was in Kenya, actually, I was in Kenya in 2003, um, you definitely, we didn't talk about poaching in the parks that we, um, that we worked closely in because there just, there just wasn't really poaching there. Um, the problem was taken care of, but starting in about 2008, 2010, my lab mate started studying elephants in Kenya and she saw a poached elephant and the problem had increased again. Now, in Central Africa, poaching has always been a problem, but it's, um, again, secretive, harder to see. In Asia, poaching is a problem, but not as much so as in Africa. Rather, their problems are more about human-elephant conflict, which is also a problem in Africa. But elephants crop raid, um, they can you know, destroy parts of people's homes, their farms, their livelihoods. So that's a bigger problem there, which of course can lead to retaliation killings. But that is more of a separate episode. So just letting people know that this is going on. For forest elephants, they declined, oh my God, I can't remember the statistic, but they declined, I wanna say, I think 70% of their range. I'll put the paper in the notes that um, they declined by that much just in the last like 10, 20 years um, since the study came out. So um, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So this is happening. Spread the word. Make sure people don't buy ivory. A lot of people go abroad and they are tricked into buying ivory. I was in a market in Galbon and I played dumb. I said, um, Actually, they said to me, this is ivory. And I said, well, aren't the elephants killed for ivory? And they said, no, they're, they're shed, their tusks shed. And I said, no, I'm pretty sure I think the elephants are killed for it. And then he was like, no, they actually find them dead. So they naturally, they find an elephant dead of natural causes, and then they take the tusks. That is not true. Elephants are going, um, their populations are in huge decline. They might become extinct just from poaching for ivory. They are killed, the bodies are left there, and the tusks are hacked off. So spread the word, don't buy ivory, and help these organizations donate money. The third way is you can write to your government. Um, so you can write letters to your senators, to the White House here in the United States, to your representatives to tell them to tell you to tell them that you care about endangered species worldwide. And the United States um, actually does give money to combat wildlife trafficking. It is um, number three trafficked item after drugs and guns. So it is a really serious issue and it's also really heavily tied to those, um, to those um, illegal businesses as well. And the Obama administration at one point donated $10 million to help combat poaching. Um, and it was also um, related to terrorism that was happening in those countries as well. So even if you don't care about the animals that much, which is not you because you're watching this, of course you care about the animals, but you can use that as an argument for other people about why we need to combat poaching because it also helps people in those countries. It helps reduce terrorism. The last way that you can help out is by taking actions to reduce your carbon footprint, help other people reduce their carbon footprint. Climate change affects every single animal on the planet, every single one, you ca it can't escape it. For forest elephants, a study just came out that used my data and um, showed that the fruits were changing over time. So this is using decades worth of fruiting data and elephant identifications. And they found that the elephants were becoming skinnier with climate change effects because the, it changed, the climate change is changing the phenology or the fruiting patterns of the trees. And the forest elephants mostly eat fruit and they basically can't get enough to eat. So your climate change, carbon, your climate change, your carbon footprint matters and it affects animals that do not live even anywhere close to you. In um, Asia and Africa, for sure, it's going to make places drier, which will definitely um, kill off populations of, of elephants or at least large numbers of individuals because of drought. 
and Kenya went through a really bad drought, um, I think like a decade ago, um, and the droughts are just going to get worse as well. So really do your part to reduce your carbon footprint, but more importantly, vote for people who take climate change seriously because Although it's important we all do this together, what is really gonna have the biggest impact is a systemic change. Change for the big companies, change on a large scale level. So voting is the most important thing that you can do. If you like these tips, and you care about animals, you care about conservation, please subscribe to my channel. I talk a lot about different animal species, how you can help them, and as well as tips for you to have um, a more eco-friendly life. If you're an aspiring wildlife biologist, I give a lot of advice on tips for becoming a wildlife biologist. Bye.